Good afternoon. This is uh, delicious and nutritious. Uh, shooting from PAC TV, uh, sponsored by Healthy Plymouth, as well as the, uh, the, uh, the Senior Center, uh, which was formerly called, or the Plymouth Center for Active Living. I'm Jerry Levine, and at the other end is uh, uh, my cohort, who uh, is from Beth Israel, and uh, Marsha will be picking it up right now, and then you'll be coming back to me, and I'll show you how to cook. Okay. All right. Take it away. Excellent. Thank you, and I'm on location at the Center for Active Living. My name is Marsha Richards. I'm a dietitian at BID Plymouth. And right off the bat, I just want to let everybody know that these recipes are posted on healthyplymouth.org. So today's show, as all shows, are dedicated to healthy eating, but delicious, affordable, simple. And Jerry does a phenomenal job with that, as you'll all see in about two seconds. So today's show is devoted to the Mediterranean way of eating, and leading scientists all confirm that this is the best way for all of us to eat. Countries in the Mediterranean area, people living in those countries tend to be healthier and they think it might have a lot to do with the foods that they're eating. So I'd like to give you eight tips on how you can start eating the Mediterranean way and then we'll turn it back over to Jerry and he'll be sharing the preparation of two recipes consistent with these eight steps. So I'm gonna look at my notes, I do apologize. I don't wanna forget anything. So first and foremost among Mediterranean eaters is eating lots of vegetables. Second, change the way you think about meat. Have protein, but if it's an animal meat, a red meat, limit it to about three ounces, definitely incorporate more fish, more beans, more legumes, and leaner meats like pork and chicken. Three, include dairy products, delicious cheeses, maybe choose lower fat versions if necessary, milks, yogurts. Look for yogurts that have 15 grams of protein and limited ingredients. Fourth, eat seafood twice per week. Five, cook a vegetarian meal one night per week and both of the um, dishes that Jerry will be preparing are considered vegetarian as well or could be made vegetarian. Number six is to use good fats. Extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, peanut oil are all great choices. Sunflower seeds, um, pine nuts, and peanuts. Number seven, switch to whole grains. When you're reading a label, look for whole grain as your first ingredient versus refined. And finally, for dessert, Try some fruit. You might actually think it's very delicious. It'll satisfy your sweet tooth. Uh, maybe even have a little angel food cake with it if you need to. So think about those eight tips. And now we'll learn about the recipes that Jerry has created and prepared. Um, and that'll get you started on eating the Mediterranean way. So back to you, Jerry. In is a large elongated body of water. You have the northern Mediterranean, the eastern Mediterranean, uh, and then you have the western Mediterranean, which is where Gibraltar is. South of that is North Africa, and then the Middle East, uh, Israel, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and, and more. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do two dishes. One is a dish called tabbouleh. Tabbouleh is basically a grain, and it is a, a bit of an unusual grain, and that it is called bulgur wheat, and it's not really a wheat uh, in the traditional sense. What needs to be done is that you, you go to the market and you buy a packet of the bulgur wheat, and it comes in, uh, uh, it's all ground and ready to be added to hot water. You don't have to cook it, because it, it's partially cooked. So you take it, you take a cup of bulgur wheat, you take a cup of boiling water, you add the boiling water to the bulgur wheat, you stir it up a little bit, and then you come back in about 45 minutes, and if there's any liquid left in there, then you use the traditional drainer, and the drainer will uh, drain out any water because you want it dry. All right, so now, 
our recipe, which is available to all of you. We're going to take the, the bulgur, we've added it to the hot water, we've allowed the absorption time, and now we're going to uh, take, and we've drained the bulgur, but we don't, and you end up with something that looks like this here. And it's got a very nice nutty flavor to it. So it's, it's an attractive grain, and it's very healthy. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get our mixing bowl. And I, I like steel. These things are great. They're easy to work with. So in goes the bulgur. And, and, and get it all in there because this is good stuff. And we'll put that over here. And we, these are the ingredients that are going to go with the bulgur. And I'm just checking my notes because I want them to go in with the, in the same order. Parsley. Notice that this is flat leaf parsley. I like flat leaf parsley primarily because it has more flavor than the curly parsley. It's a personal preference, but uh, you should do what you want, and, that, and that's fine with me. Okay, so we put that in there, and the parsley goes in, and then we put in the scallions, and we put in the mint, and we put in the tomato, and we put in the cucumber. Uh, the cucumber that we're using is an English cucumber. It's cut about a quarter of an inch uh, dice, and it has a nice flavor, and it, it tastes really dynamite. Uh, what you do when you take the cucumber, you cut it elongated, and then you cut it into a number of strips, and then you can you use your knife. And as you, re if you recall, I showed how the knife is held, and the and you cut it. You can either do the French method, which is where the blade sits down, and you rock, or you can do the Oriental method, where you do the chopping. I would suggest because of the control issue, you're better off trying with the French method. All right, first thing that we do is we mix our bulgur and our veggies. And we take our lemon juice, olive oil, and we hold that in one hand. We take our salt and, and pepper and cumin, and we start sprinkling. There we go, nice sprinkle. Okay, give your lemon and olive oil a little stir. And we kind of drizzle, and just try to get it so it's somewhat even. And off we go, and we mix it. Now, I suggest, because I happen to like hummus, uh, excuse me, tabbouleh, cold. So I would suggest that this go into the refrigerator for at least an hour and a half before you serve it. It enhances the flavor. It also allows the, the lemon to be absorbed into the various ingredients here. And the tabbouleh picks it up. But this is, you know, this is edible right now, except it won't have the crunch that you're going to get. Notice how I'm rotating the bowl. I'm rotating the bowl at, and there we go. And these things are for the next thing. So, tabbouleh, southern Mediterranean. Uh, the Arabs love it, the North Africans love it, uh, the Israelis love it, the Lebanese love it, and the, the, the Lebanese really like French food, so maybe the French even like it. But, but look at the colors. The colors are vibrant. They're red, they're green, they're the, the brownishness. So it's, it's a very attractive dish. So I'm going to send us back to Marsha to see if there are any questions. And Marsha can talk about the nutrition for a moment while I do one other thing while uh, we're offline here. Uh, take it away, Marsha. All right, that was awesome. You know, one of the things I wanted to mention is the vibrant colors that you commented Good. on. Whenever we eat foods that have those deep, beautiful colors, you can be sure that you're also getting 
a lot of phytochemicals and phytochemicals only come from plant foods and they are very, very good for us. They are things like antioxidants, polyphenols, flavonoids. Um, I think lignans are also um, a polyphenol. In any event, the, the research is indicating that these are also elements in food that are providing us with health, in addition to the carbohydrates, the proteins, the fats, the vitamins, and the minerals. So for our tabbouleh, per serving, and that serving that Jerry just made would feed about six people. So it would be a pretty hefty serving, about 173 calories, seven grams of fat, and the fat would be those good fats, the olive oil, and about five grams of protein and pretty low in sodium, um, about 200 milligrams of sodium. So awesome, also a great source of vitamins A and C, both are good for your immune system, your skin, your eyes, and also a good amount of B vitamins from the bulgar. Um, yes, let's see, question. A parsley question? Oh, there was a question about the basil, Jerry. Um, Oh, that's the next recipe. Never mind. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get where, to it later. Yep. So where does somebody buy the bulgar? Uh, you can actually buy it in most supermarkets. Uh, and it, I, I would suggest you go over to the baking section and look uh, in the area of, uh, of grains and wheat. And I'm not going to mention the name of a company, but uh, they have a number of different things. They have, they have oats, they have bulgur, they have different types of rices. But uh, ask someone, if you can't find it, ask somebody for bulgur wheat. Excellent. Okay? And that is a and, whole grain. And you grain. can see the spelling on the, uh, on the recipe. It, it's, yep. it's readily available. It's, it's in just about every supermarket. Okay, another question. Yes. For the tomatoes, do you remove the seeds in the pulp or just cut the tomato whole? No, not at all. What I do is I take the tomato and I slice it a quarter inch thick and then I take and I, I pile them up and then I will slice across like this. So now I've got a quarter inch strip. I do a 90 degree rotation and I chop it. That gives me my quarter cut. I do not remove the seeds. I do not remove the juices. It's not traditionally done that way, and I happen to like it the way it is. I mean, you can do that. The Italians like to do that, and the French will yeah. do it at times. But uh, the, the southern Med Mediterranean people don't find it necessary. And I'm Marcia, smiling can, because... Can you talk about uh, any nutrition that's coming from the juice and the seeds? Yes, you're reading my mind like you always do. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so those seeds and all the pulp, the skin, that's like the best part of the tomato. Why would we want to ever get rid of that? Filled with nutrients, filled with those phytochemicals, even some fluid and some fiber. So eat the whole tomato. Excellent. Glad right. to hear it. Any more questions or shall we move on to our next? Marcia, oh, I see a question me. behind yes. you. Oh, there's the coconut oil question, Jerry. <laughs> okay, you're the nutritionist. I okay. just cook. So the olive oil is um, a monounsaturated fat, considered very healthy. Most plant-based oils are considered monounsaturated, with the exception of coconut oil, which is a saturated fat. So there is a lot of um, Im information promoting coconut oil in a lot of the foods that we eat. I would suggest that people moderate their coconut oil consumption because it is a saturated fat. 
it's okay to have a little bit. It adds a nice flavor to certain foods, but we should be having it in moderate or lower amounts due to its saturated fat content. If you want to put it in your hair or put it on your skin, that's okay. But as far as in your food, I would be careful about the amount that we use. Okay. Okay. So um, shall we move on to our next recipe, Jerry? To do pasta with chickpeas, spinach, and lemon. Uh, it's a very healthy recipe. Uh, it is vegetarian for those of us that grew up as meatitarians, and uh, we want to switch a little bit for some put, have less meat in our diet. I suggest you do some vegetable dishes, but use things in them such as uh, one of the citrics, uh, such as lemon juice or something along those lines to enhance the flavor. So you're not saying, oh, I wish there were a piece of steak in here. And uh, so that, that's, that's my suggestion. One thing about oils, if it's solid at room temperature, it's what is called a tropical oil. And, and the coconut and palm are in that group. So if, if you pick it up and it won't roll around and move, then it's one of those oils that have more saturated fat. So if it's rolling around, and there are some really good mono and polyunsaturated fats that have flavor, such as olive oil, but if you want a neutral oil that doesn't have a flavor, canola works really well, and, the, and there are others. If you want something that's got a real lot of flavor, uh, walnut oil or any of the nut oils are really very good. Okay, all right, we're on our way. And we are making orchetta. Our pasta is orchetta, and orchetta looks like a little Italian ear. So I I if you'll notice, this is the orchetta, and it looks kind of like an ear. Notice my ear? Any anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our pasta pot, because we don't have to wash a lot of dishes here. Either that or I'll get my wife to wash them. So we put, the, and, and you, see, you can see, this is not a fake show. We actually have cooked the pasta. So now, what's our next step? We want to put some oil into this. So we're, you, we are using olive oil, and we're going to put the olive oil in there. And of course, my favorite mixing jar for uh, salad dressings, a, a jelly jar works fine. So we're going to put that in there. And one of the reasons I'm putting that in here at this time is because I don't want the pasta to stick. It, it won't while it's warm, but this can be served either hot or cold. But mix in some oil, and that way you won't have the issue of it sticking. Now, we are going to come over here, and we're going to gently take some pine nuts, or commonly called pignoli. And we're going to heat our burner up. And we are going to cook this gently. And now the point here is that you, you have to watch this. You can't go in there and watch television and at the same time as cooking this. Because if you do, the nuts are going to burn. So all we want is a, a tiny little bit of, of color. And that's it. And it gives you a nice toastiness to the pine nut. And we are cooking along here. And we're going to cook just a little bit longer. And I'm going to Lee just do that. And I'm going to keep my good eye on this. And we're, we are, OK, we're, we're, we're rolling along here, and we're going to take and we've got our pine nuts that are cooking. And our pine nuts are about done. And we're going to just take them and put them over here. And we're going to leave our burner on because we want to do a little garlic. And the garlic is right here. 
So the garlic goes in, and we're going, all we want to do is cook the garlic a little bit. And notice that I am using a, a nonstick pan. Uh, they work really well, and this will cook really quickly. And we are coming along, and we'll shut this down a little bit so I can move on to the next step. And one of the steps that we have to do is we need a bit of a lemon rind, and we can do it with a, a, a vegetable peeler, or we could take one of my favorite implements, which is, looks like a box, and that's what it's called. So we're, we're rolling along here, and and that is about now th this box grater happens to have a piece of plastic on the bottom so it's all sitting on the bottom not on my piece of paper and it's not all on the floor which uh, doesn't work well and now what we're going to do is we are going to take and our Garlic is about done, and we're rolling along, so the garlic's going in there. And we put the pan off to the side, and we're going to start adding other things. We have basil. Some people like to call it basil. And this is a sun-dried tomato that has been put in olive oil, and I've diced them about a quarter of an inch. Uh, we have here scallions. And we are going to put in some spinach. Nice and healthy stuff. Now think about what you've seen me put in here. Is These are all healthy things, but they're also flavorful. And they make a vegetarian dish taste really good. Finally, we're going to add some chickpeas. And we're going to turn the heat on. And we are going to make sure that we stir. So we are now stirring. And with one of my favorite instruments, uh, we are rolling along here. And you, you can hear it cooking. And now that I've got it cooking, I'm putting in a little bit of dried pepper. Now, why didn't you put the Parmesan cheese in there? Because that's going to go on at the very end, because I don't want it to burn on the bottom of the pan. So we are going to do that. And we are just about done here. And we're going to finish it off with our pine nuts. And we're going to put some cheese in there. And I've turned the heat off. And the cheese is going in there. And we're stirring it up a little bit. Ah, oh, does it smell good. OK, let's, let's plate this. A little bit of lemon juice that should have gone in there. OK. And Now, the plating is really easy because I'm using tongs. OK. Our two dishes. Kabuli, without the spoon. And pasta with chickpeas, spinach, and lemon. Marshall, if you'd like to talk about nutrition, go ahead. I'm happy to answer questions. That looks delicious. We can't wait to try it. Um, in addition to talking about nutrition, I would like to share that we called the pasta belly buttons. 
versus ears. Not sure if anybody else out there calls them belly buttons as well. So this recipe is an awesome entree that provides grain, vegetable, some fruit juice, um, plenty of herbs and seasonings, and the chickpeas for both protein and fiber. So you could add a little extra protein. I bet it would be awesome if you added some shrimp or if you wanted to make it a more um, robust meal. But both of these recipes are so rich in nutrients and consistent with eating that Mediterranean way as far as getting whole grains, eating more vegetables, watching the amount of meat, having healthier fats like the olive oil. Um, I'm curious if there are any questions out here. Yes. So, Jerry, why not use a fresh tomato versus a sun-dried tomato? That's a very good question. You could, uh, but the flavor is going to be different. And I like the sun-dried sun tomato because it ha has uh, the, the drying process intensifies the flavor within that tomato. And also what you marinate it in. And I personally, I, I can see doing it either way, and it's, it's not a problem. But it's a good question. Excellent. So I'm looking at the timer, and it looks like we have literally 31 seconds left. <laughs> okay. Can so, I make one comment? Yes. And, and, and just one, In 31 one, seconds. one simple comment, and that is, is that if you really want to increase the nutritional value, this is a, a pasta, and you can use whole grain pastas also. Right. This is a typical pasta of what you normally buy in the market. The whole grain uh, pastas will increase the nutrition. Marcia, it's all yours. Okay, thank you everybody for watching. All recipes are on healthyplymouth.org. See you on the next show. Take care.